All right, you're tuned in to the most shadow banned man in the land. And um, as you can see, you're looking at my shadow right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm back in slave land here, but um, I appreciate my job. A lot of people don't have a job. And um, so for that reason, I'm thankful because no matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. And um, the job that I have um, doesn't pay me peanuts like a lot of my old jobs used to. So I'm grateful for that as well. But with that out of the way, I just want to do a, uh, a wandering uh, rant, I guess, that will touch on some different topics. I had a lot of good comments in my uh, video earlier, and um, I mentioned that to reiterate the fact that uh, some of you leave comments, and I'm not allowed to respond to them for some reason. And sometimes those comments that I can't respond to, it'll either let me do it later, or it will, uh, the comments will disappear, and I'll get like a warning. It'll be like, keep your comments uh, section respectful. Um, you know, so I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Not only uh, does, does real truth content get uh, banned, but in addition to that, you can't even leave uh, real comments anymore. So it's pretty absurd. But uh, here we are in 2020, and we're still dealing with, uh, you know, the, the same problems that have been persisting. And, and, and uh, when I say we, I'm talking about specifically the United States. I was watching some of the commentary on uh, the debates, and it's, it's, it's utterly absurd. You know, both of these parties, if you don't get anything else from this channel... One of the things that I want to get across is that both of the major parties are uh, failures. And, well, they're not failing uh, according to their standards because they're not really working on behalf of, of a country uh, or the actual general population. But, you know, now that I mention that, that means that this video actually pertains to most of the world. There are a few countries where the elected officials actually do uh, give a damn about the people that they're supposed to represent or the people whose interests, best interests they're supposed to look out for. And uh, I mention them, uh, you know, occasionally, but um, one, one, of that, one that keeps popping into my mind lately is Iceland. Ever since I saw how the people of Iceland handled the banksters in uh, 2008 or 2008, I should say, um, I'm so used to saying the 20s now, but um, the way the people of Iceland handled the, the financial uh, collapse or the, the great, great Recession, whatever you want to call it, people of Iceland came off better than a lot of the uh, other people around the world. Big factor to do with that is, um, I believe, but I've seen comments from people from Iceland and Denmark and the other northern European countries uh, that that actually gives me hope for humanity. I saw one comment where, because um, the individual said, well, the reason the people in Denmark and Norway have such a good uh, social uh, system and, you know, everybody's standard of living is relatively high is because they're all the same race. One of the comments I saw from uh, someone from Denmark actually said that that's not the biggest factor, which it, it gives me encouragement because that shows you if you're a decent human being and you live in a decent society where people are given, you know, relative to, especially to other countries in the so-called developed world, when the general population is actually given the tools that they need to actually live a decent life, they have a lot better attitude, uh, not only towards themselves, but to other people. So that's an encouraging sign because uh, this individual actually said it was a he basically said that, that Denmark and I, I don't know if he was speaking for the other countries, but he said it, it's not they're not socialist, but he said they have a socialist type of mentality, uh, you know, which, again. If, if you're looking to um, and, and this goes for a lot of things in life, 
And, and, and the sad part is uh, recently with the, the, the Avengers movie, what they tried to demonize was balance. So the villain in um, you know, the Avengers, uh, the Avengers Endgame, uh, Thanos was seeking balance. And they, they made, you know, just like um, in, in the Batman, they're doing this a lot with action movies and comic book movies. The people who are actually the villains are, and I'm thinking of Bane and uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, if you listen to his speech, it was actually good. He, you know, he talked about the injustice of Gotham City and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the same thing with, with, uh, with Thanos. He's, he's seeking balance in the universe. So, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. But you, you tend to have, uh, and, and this is how most people get polarized, and this is why politics is so messed up. Which brings me to the original discussion. <clears throat> I make it no secret that I'm on the left and I support non-Marxist socialism. <laughs> um, but those are my ideals. In reality, I'm a practical person. I realize most people are not going to lean towards the far left, left economically, especially given the, the disinformation, misinformation that we get here in the education system in the United States. But the reason I push so hard and why I am so extreme, I'll use an example from one of my mentors. One of my mentors, um, he used to tell me never to attack Afrocentric historians. The reason he said that was because he, you know, he said that history for a great amount of time was Eurocentric. So we should leave the Afrocentrics alone because it's like a pendulum on the clock. If you notice, the pendulum goes in both directions. It goes to the left and the right, or however you want to put it, north or south, east or west. It goes to each opposite end, and it, it, you know, there's a middle point. And to me, that's a metaphor for life, you know. Um, but uh, unfortunately, most people don't want to think in terms of balance, like, because even if you are a capitalist, um, I don't think you want to live in a world where out of 7 billion people, maybe a few thousand or even less than a few thousand people own and control everything. That's not even good for your ideology. That brings us back to monarchies, monopolies, and uh, otherwise, uh, you know, quote unquote, it, it, it's, it's an unfree market because of, you know, I've stated why I don't believe in that term, the free market, but according to Adam Smith is one of those things that breaks the invisible hand. Monopolies and inherited wealth breaks the invisible hand. But again, a lot of people who want to claim to be capitalist or anti-socialist don't tend to look at those uh, aspects of Adam Smith and other pro-capitalists who actually realize you do need some sort of uh, balancing act and you do need some sort of uh, intervention to make things function properly. So getting to our election cycle, these politicians are talking the same crap as always, except for Bernie Sanders. The rest of the politicians is just cut and paste from the, the same playbook. I'm, I'm going to fight for you. I saw a commercial for Klobuchar before she dropped out where she's like, if you're um, um, a, a parent or a single mother who needs child care, I'll fight for you. But if you need elder care, I'll fight for you. You know, these platitudes and, and, and empty sloganeering that Trump really did a good... If, if people paid attention to Trump, he pretty much did what a lot of politicians do, except for he dumbed it down even more. He yelled out empty slogans uh, designed to make the people who were attracted to him feel even better and more enthusiastic. Stupid slogans like lock her up, make America great again, build that wall. That's all slogans and sloganeering. This guy broke every promise because even if he builds the wall, people, he, how many times did he say Mexico was going to pay for it? Not that there should be a wall anyway, because guess what? If there is a wall, it will be dug under, you know, there are ways to get in, uh, <laughs> through or around or under the, under whatever wall he builds. His uh, rich 
uh, factory farmers will still want that cheap labor. And he's really not addressing the main problem of immigration. Immigration needs to be uh, brought, brought to a halt outright. And you could do that by simply enforcing the laws. You don't need to build a wall. All you could do is make sure <clears throat> the jobs that uh, these illegal aliens do are prevented by either raising the wages and having real ID checks as far as um, you make sure people aren't using people. So, Because what I found out was a lot of people from Latin America use, um, they steal the IDs of uh, people from Puerto Rico because Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory and the individuals have Spanish names because it's predominantly Spanish-speaking territory. So you prevent stuff like that and then you penalize the people who are using their cheap labor. You either raise, the, you make them raise the wages so that they have to make them, well actually Americans, if you raise the wage for some of these tasks, Americans would do the job or you penalize them heavily, heavily enough to where you take away the incentive for them and you make sure so if you raise the tax or you, or you penalize them financially for hiring illegals, you make sure they don't pass the cost on to consumers. You tell them if you raise that price of whatever agricultural product or other product, you raise the price to the extent that it hurts them and you don't allow them to raise the price of the, of the goods that are being manufactured with the cheap labor. And then you also don't bring in individuals from India and other places where they have uh, high tech training and medical training. You encourage kids that are in school now, like kids that are in middle school, there should be some sort of government initiative that encourages them to get into the trades and encourages them to study information technology. That way they have good paying jobs and you don't have to import cheap labor from India. These are the things you do to prevent illegal immigration. Building a wall is only going to enrich his friends and the people that ultimately build a wall because it won't be, a, it's not like the U.S. Army and the government aren't going to give them raw material. So somebody's going to get handsomely paid for building a wall and I'll bet you it's going to be one of his friends. So you know, these, but these politicians, it's all empty slogans. They've been arguing over the same stuff for decades, abortion. I mean, abortion still comes up. And then the kicker for me with the Democrats, the reason the Democrats are bad, are so bad, is because instead of them being a workers and labor party, they focus on identity politics and sexual perversion. They ran away a lot of uh, middle American like people from the, the center of the country in between either coast, they ran off a lot of those rural voters and, and voters from the inner states by supporting all these Hollywood and other, you know, mega city values that these people find to be abhorrent. And they got away from labor, which was on purpose because both of the parties serve the rich. That's what we need to realize. They both are in it for the rich. The reason the Democrats, all they talk about is abortion and sexual perversion issues is because they want to run away working class uh, European Americans. I've exceeded my time limit. Uh, this was just a rant, like listening to these campaign ads. Um, God willing, if I get home early enough, uh, which will probably be 3 a.m., I'm going to finish up on the J World Order. But thanks for watching, and God willing, see you in the next one.